What is going on guys, we are back with more ulti, this is round for losers bracket between Bushchurch and CG Mass, this is game 1 And yeah, looking at the teams, we see this is a most likely Zarex because he doesn't have a T-Tablet pursued support for Zard Y And yeah, this is a default new Vodazard. Zard, I assume this is a Rock Sparrow because usually you don't carry Rocks and Spikes if you have a Zard Y because you're gonna be forced to default most of the time And that's either Scarf Land or Scarf Caldeo and the Coco Um Depending on which one of those two is Scarf, the other one could be the Z-Move user and then the Coco could be Magna or Specs. But of course it also be Z-Move Coco, we don't know that yet. And looking at CGMA's team, I assume that this is either Scarf Kelly or Scarf Cartana. Um, Z-Move Gyarados, and Magnet or Specs. We don't know the Coco set yet. And the Landers, I'm not sure yet. Defensive set is dealer for sure. The Landers could definitely be some offensive to pressure wall thing, offensive breaker type of Lando. But yeah, just so you guys know, um, I recorded this game yesterday. I'm renovating over today. Um, my internet died at one point, so there's gonna be two turns that I missed live, but we're gonna be rewatching those turns when we come to that point. But yeah, um, Bush to Coco looks like a big threat to CG Mas at team preview. Um, he doesn't really have good switch-ins until he, fa like, if he figures out the set, then he might have good switch in but before that, he definitely doesn't have one. <laughs> And yeah, Bushes at least has a Pharaoh Zone to check opposing Coco. But yeah, if that's not defensive land on Sijuma's side, Zarex looking like a threat as well. So they're both lead up with Coco. Sijuma's, like I said, doesn't have good visions. So if Sijuma's has Huge on his Coco, he's not gonna go for it here because if he wins the speed time, what is he gonna switch into? Like something would just get blown away. So I assume that Sijuma's is just gonna stay in here and attack um, to figure out the opposing um, Coco set. And so Bushtush, if he doesn't, if he's just the wild charge, I assume he's gonna go hard into his Feral Thorn. But if he has something to hit the opposing Coco, then he might stay in and go for that. So we shall see. But yeah, for Sijumas, it's most important to just find out the set, as I said. So yeah, there's gonna be the best, the entire best of three is gonna be on my channel. And probably the games are gonna be separated in um, multiple videos, two or three, depending on how many games happened. I'm obviously not gonna spoil the outcome if you guys don't know. I know I know some people already know the outcome. But if you don't know it I don't wanna spoil you. So like if CGMAS has like Dazzling or T Bolt <laughs> like Dazzling would obviously be um CGMAS best move to hit the opposing Coco is neutral, but if he doesn't have that, this is just a tough turn, and he would probably just go for his electric move if he doesn't have Dazzling Gleam. As you guys can see there, um, Sejimus didn't have Dazzling Gleam, so he just went for the electric move. That was what he had to hit the Coco the best. So we do get information here. Sejimus now knows that it's Specs Coco from Bush to side. Sejimus Coco is probably like Magnet or something like that, because that was not Specs damage. He got a crit, and it was also electric turn boosted. So I know it's resisted, but that still wasn't Specs, I'm pretty sure. And now Sijumas can go into his Celestila, it covers Bushtush going into a Ferrothorn and it covers Bushtush staying and going for Dazzling Gleam because he's locked in. Um, unless he has some hidden tech on his Tapu Kuku, like a hidden power fire to hit Ferrothorn, then he can just go into Celestila unless he ha if he doesn't have that, but he has it and he pulls it out and makes an amazing play early on. So Bushtush is not gonna want to sack his Ferrothorn, so he's gonna switch here. Um, so uh, Sijimas might go for like a rooster for a U-turn breaking a switch. Um, so he showed t hidden power fire. His other moves, um, he goes for a U-turn there breaking the switch. Amazing play. Like I said, U-turn or roost both would have been good options there. But I'm thinking his last move might be taunt to um, like prevent. Like taunt can be nice in this match to prevent the Mew from defogging. To prevent uh, Ferrothorn from like leech seeding stuff like that. Even though he's not going to be. Like, Ferrothorn is not a problem to this because he can just kill it with HP fire. Yeah, what am I saying? Forget the Ferrothorn example. It's just in this match for Taunting Mew. But yeah, basically, he U-turns on the Landers. He can go in his own Landers and get up the rocks. Or he can go in his Caldery here and fire off a Scald and fish for a burn. So he goes in his own Landers. Um, if I'm Bush to Shia, I either go hard into Mew. Mew all carry Ice Beam these days. Or most Mew do. Especially on Bush to Steam, it looks like his main Zygarde check. So Bush to can. Expect the rocks, and if he has, if his land was HPS, that would be the play to make a feel. But since he wants the rocks gone, obviously, like really badly, he might just go hard into Mew. And 
threatened this lander over the ice beam. So you might obviously just gonna go for rocks here. That's the play that gains him the most overall, no matter what uh, Bushtush does. Because if Bushtush stays and goes for Hidden Power Eyes, Tijumas goes for rocks, he can then double out the next turn anticipating the Mew. Um, can double out into his potential Coco with Taunt. Potential Taunt Coco is what I meant to say. But yeah, um, Bushtush um, it's taking a while here. But yeah, the main reason why I'm renovating this game, these games is um, sometimes I stay up super long. I like um, I don't get enough sleep when I record a lot of games late at night, and then when these when uh, when I don't sleep one day, the next day a game happened. I can't focus on a narration, so I just record it and then narrate it the next day. Um, it's pretty like it's still enjoyable for me, and it's basically like I don't remember anything. Like it's basically like I haven't seen the game. Because I, I I don't remember because like it happened 18 hours ago. Like I remember like 40% of the game, but I don't remember everything. So we do see um, Bush Tush expect that Sijumas to stay in and go for like a U-turn, but Sijumas had a Yachi Berry anyway, so it didn't matter like if Bush Tush predicts that. So there was a fine play on Sijumas, and he actually has knock off the tech. So now this Muse uh, crippled, which means um, Katana. Doesn't get checked well by his Mew and rocks are still up. So Bush is gonna go for Defog here. He obviously needs them gone the rocks. Um, he already went for Ice Beam once and now Sijuma lost his Yachi Bear and the land was obviously dive. Even if he didn't, if he even if he had still Yachi, even if he still had Yachi, good God, that was bad English at one point. But yeah, Sijuma uh, can obviously still predict the Defog, but it depends on his land. Or if he's off played, he can kill the Mew, but. He doesn't kill the Mew. I think that's not off play to be honest. Um, I think maybe it's exit build. The knockoff did a lot. I don't know actually. I actually don't know that item. Um, it's probably fast Mew. Uh, knockoff does a bit more than off quick because um, I think knockoff has 95 base power when an item gets knocked off, so it's super effective. Which means yeah, it's definitely stronger than 150. Off quick is one step. One, it's 100 and step, which means it gets 50 more power. So it's 150. Yeah, knockoff is definitely stronger. It's not, especially if it's not off played. So yeah, Bushro is just gonna softball up here. Siju must cannot stay in here, obviously. I mean, he could have kept rocking. He could have kept rocking and basically said, "Okay, I'm gonna keep rocking until you kill my landers." Then he could have gone into Coco after the taunters. But I compl uh, this was a fine series of plays. And oh my God, how does he do it? So <laughs> I sound like smoke to the chat there. I sound that sound kind of weird. But yeah, um, he knows that uh, Bushtush doesn't want to stay in, and Bushtush knows that his landers walls this most likely because he showed hidden power five, so he doesn't have hidden power eyes. He showed T-ball and U-turn. The last move is either Torn or Roost, most likely, so but probably not Dazzling Gleam. So, like, Lando was a completely fine play by Bush Tush, but amazing play by Sijumas, knowing that that Lando would come out and now Kelly can fish for a burn. Uh, Bush Tush fighting risk at this point is um, Ferrothorn and Coco, and his. Yeah, Ferrothorn and his Coco are his fighting risks and his Lando, but his Lando is already in. So, the Water Wolf was pretty obvious there. And he doesn't get the burn. Um, the Katana in the back is quite obvious here, so. Uh, Sijimas might scald again, expecting Bush Tush to uh, double out. So if I'm Bush Tush here, you either go for rocks or you um, double into Zard, or you can go for knockoff. Because if you go for knockoff, you can one get potentially you can potentially get rid of a scarf on the Kelio, which would come into help can come into play later. Um, like it would help his Kelio to outspeed the opposing Kelio. It would mean his Kelio speed test with the opposing Kelio. But yeah, Sijima stays in, Bushtush just goes for rocks, he gets the burn. But yeah, going for knockoff there would have gotten rid of the Scarf. A, B, if Sijima goes into Katana, it would have given Bushtush information if it's Z-move Katana. Um, I'm thinking it might be D for Katana actually, because he has a Gyarados weak to rocks. But yeah, now Bushtush um, might actually double into Zard. Um, Sijima predicts that and scores again, that would be bad for Bush. Tush, um... If he stays in, his play is most likely knockoff or power, but probably knockoff. Like, it just gives you more if Sijuma switches. Knockoff gives you more out of the turn than power if Bush, uh, if Sijuma goes into Katana here. Like, knockoff at least gives you information, like I said, or if it doesn't give you information that he moves, it gives um, you his item, like you get rid of the item. Watch Sijuma. <laughs> Sijuma. Um, Went fishing there. <laughs> I don't know if he's um, gonna scald again. He like a wild man predicts Bush to double. Um, I feel like yeah, doubling to Zard is a bit too risky, I guess, in that in that regard. Is that even correct English? 
Like, if he scores again, he doubles his art, he'll, you get completely obliterated. So, Bushdurge makes like a... Well, I don't know what he predicted by going Caldeo, but... That play definitely covered Sijima's thing and going for Skull again. But Sijima gets lucky there, gets another Skull burn. So this Scarf Kelly looking like it can potentially um, clean up late game. The Feral Zone is super low. Um, so that, that I'm just talking about the Fighting Resists. The Fighting Resists are getting lower. The only Fighting Resists that he has to weaken is the Mew. But he already got rid of the lefties. And he also weakened that a bit. He already weakened that a bit. So we do see Sijima's uh, Bushtrush uh, Kelly Z move. So yeah. Most likely his um, Lando is uh, Scarf then because his Coco was Specs and he doesn't have any speed control so far. So yeah, Sijumas is probably just gonna sack his Celestia here. Yeah, there's no point in Call Mining up. Um, most of the time this Kelly runs Call Mine Secret Sword, Hydro Pump and Taunt. Um, Bush is just gonna Hydro Pump again and, and he should just sack this. And after he can come in with his Coco and threaten this out. Or he can come in with his Katana and threaten this out. He has a few options. So he goes Kartana here. Um, what he can do is he can go for Defog. Um, Bushdish has a free switch into his Charizard here. If he's for some reason double Scarf, Scarf Kelly and Scarf Kartana, then... Um, yeah, then I'm not just not the biggest fan of his team. I don't think he's double Scarf. If this is not Z-Move and not Scarf, what other options are there? Um, hmm. It's actually a good question. Maybe some, some maybe fist plate. Um, not not fist plate. Like an item, like steel plate. Or, yeah, fist plate is another option. But like some item that boosts the move. Maybe I haven't really seen Katana without Z move or Scarf that much. So yeah, Bush just scouts there. Um, for if he's locked into Defog, I don't know why he went to Pharaoh. Oh, he just wants to sack his Pharaoh. I don't know why he didn't go hard in the Charizard. That was completely free, and he could have kept his Pharaohs on for later. And now he took um thirty one on his Zard. I don't want to say for no reason, but it was kind of unnecessary to take damage on Zard. And yeah, you can just fire off a flare, but see if he's Zardex, I assume he's Zardex. And he definitely wants to keep this Kartana around. Okay, we have been at the part where my internet died, so now we're gonna rewatch the few turns that we missed. So he's just gonna go Koku to suck it off on a flare blitz. He's gonna go on a Kelly, I assume. Yup. Uh, Hydro Pump obviously is the only play that kills Zard from here. The only move that kills it. Varuson gets to hit Kyo. Let's see if his Kelly is well trained and can hit two Hydro Pumps. Yup. Uh, Bushrush can go on the Mew here and Roost up. And Sijumas can go. Okay, he goes Landorus. So now he's gonna go back into. Yeah, back into Kelly on an Ice Beam. And he's gonna try to burn this unless he has this move. Toxic Bob. Um, yeah, otherwise he was just trying to like would have just had to try to get the burn on the Mew. But Toxic is actually a nice tech. I know his Kelly also has to take damage, but he's not going to be staying in long with the Kelly. He switches it out here, res resets the Toxic. Um, Bushtrush obviously knew that he was locked in the Toxic and his Kelly is already burned, so that was a fine play by Bushtrush. I think Sijumas um, expected. I don't know if he was like. Just willing to sag this Landris and he just wanted to switch out his Kelly to reset the Toxic Timer. And best case, um, Bushdush would have went to something that would have led, like, like his own Lando. If his own Lando was lagging HPI, then um, CG might have been able to get up rocks there. But I'm pretty sure nothing would have let, pretty much nothing would have let um, CG must get up rocks. So I think he just was, I think he was just sagging his Landris there to reset Kelly's Toxic Timer and to get a free switch into something. That's just what I assume at least. Kartana fires of a leaf blade here. Um, there's a scarf landers. He can go for U-turn here, and he can go U-turn into his Zard. Um, I assume it's the Roost three attack Zard. I haven't seen many DD Zards at all. U-turn actually. Um, there's a good chunk to the Kelly. I'm not gonna lie. So you can go to Mew here. Um, everything else just dies to scarf hydro pump. And his Kelly would obviously die to a fighting move. That is a secret sword. I don't remember how healthy his Kelly is. I think it's a 40 something Bush to Kelly. Was it? Basically, Bush is gonna spam Ice Beam to weaken this Kelly, then he's gonna roost up again. And. Sijima's. 
like Sejimas can go into Gyarados on Ice Beam, but it doesn't help him that much because Mew runs enough speed for Max Belarus, and I'm pretty sure that's enough speed to outspeed the Gyarados as well. Ooh, Bushush looks like a complete guard there, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, Sejimas just predicted a softball there. So I think Sejimas tried to reset the Toxic on his Kaleo, predicted um, the Mew to Roost. I said softball, but I meant Roost, it's the same thing. And then he might have gone back into Kaleo, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, uh, yeah, the other reason why he switched out his Kaleo is um, because Kaleo cleans up late game, he doesn't want the Toxic to rack, uh, to rack up too much. And he doesn't need a Gyarados to win, and... Can attempt to dragon dance. Oh, he, nah, he just dragon dance exactly. And even if, even though this is a burnt Gyarados, um, if it has a Z move, the Zard is most likely still gonna die. Like, I know Zardex gets a defense boost compared to the regular Zard, but still, uh, Z moves are busted. It don't matter. You get blown away by a Z bounce or Z waterfall, whatever he has. And yeah, DD obviously enables him to outspeed the Zard here. And what Bushish has to do is go on his Landris after. That's his only speed control. And then he has to hit a Stone Edge. And then it's looking like Scarf Caldia is gonna potentially clean up, but. I'm not sure if he has enough if he has enough health on his scarf kill you with the toxic and everything. It's a close one actually. I don't remember that this game was this close. See like it's it's kinda as if I'm watching it live, like I said earlier. Even I've already even though I've already seen it yesterday. So Kelly was his only play here. Actually, I mean Katana works too because he's locked in. Yeah, yeah. What am I saying? Good God, that was embarrassing. Um. So now Sijumas can go into his um Katana because the land was locked on the Stone Edge. The Muse poison and super low. So I assume that um, he's gonna go Kartana, then the Mew is gonna get sacked off, and then Bushtrus is gonna go in his Tabu Coco and get a kill with his Thunderbolt. Um, Kartana obviously dies to Specs Thunderbolt. Kartana is uh, trash to death. And it's Electric Train boosted. I think it also dies to like Draco from Latios. So yeah, there's no reason to not click T Bolt. And then it's Kelly versus the world afterwards. For for Sijumas. <laughs> and I don't think I don't know if Kelly can win because uh, Secret Sword is probably a role to kill the Coco. And if he goes for Hydro Pump, you still have to hit three Hydros. And I think Hydro would also potentially be a role on Bush Tour's Kelio. So the, the chances are like in Bush Tour's favor here to take the game. Needs a roll slash crit here, I assume, because Coco's fist dev is like I think 85. The fist dev is decent. The spell from Coco is pretty trash, but the fist dev is not that bad. I've seen it live uh, physical hits surprisingly well. As he does not get the roll, and the game ends right here. Bushtush wins game one. Um, thank you guys for watching. I will be right back, and uh, not right, but like in one or two hours after. You guys can expect game 2 to go up.